Okay, I don't know if you've ever heard Third Time's a Charm. Um, Hansel and Gretel. It came in the mail this last weekend. I've already done some on this page. Third Time's a Charm because this is the third time I'm trying to, to video this. It's very hard for you to see because I'm doing skin tone. And skin tone on children is a lot lighter when they're really young than it is on adults. Unless they play outside all the time. Now, even though you can't see everything I've done here, I'm going to walk you through it so you can see where I put the color. So I am using um, the Marco Ruffines. No, Marco... Yeah, Ruffines. All right, so I'm going to go all the way around the outside of her face. And this is number 520. I'm going to come in just a little, getting lighter as I come in, so it's easier to blend. Now, do you see how they are not looking straight on? If we were taking a photo of children, get down here in the darker area of the ear, if we were taking pictures of children or people, this is not straight on. He's a little looking this way. She's looking a lot this way. All right? So when you get ready to do the cheeks, you do not have to make sure that they're even because they're not looking straight on, which I, for one, really appreciate. My cheek color is 517. All right. I'm going to deepen that just a little. Just barely. I'll show you how I got this far in just a second. I'm going to come in with my lighter color, 519, and once again blend over the top of this. Um, cheeks are not easy for me. You know, different things are easier for different people. Back to 517. Now I'm going to put her cheeks in, and this is going to be dark, but I'm going to show you something. Put the cheek in. And then get lighter around that outer edge. This will be okay. It really will or I wouldn't be doing it to my book. Okay. Then I'm going to come in and I'm going to erase it. <laughs> I'm serious. Yes. You can't tell it, but there is still color down there. The color goes way down into the page. Can you see that there's a little bit of pink in there? Look at his cheeks. Now look at hers. Now when I come back in with my lightest of my skin tones, my 519, I'm going to go over all that. And it's going to help set that color. Now. Because of the paper in this book, I'm barely doing circles, but I am doing them. And I know that it's going to work for me. Um, because I've already done him and done in my other books, I know what works. So whatever works for you, whether it's lines, strokes, um, little ticky marks, little bitty circles, larger circles, whatever. But now as I'm going over this, she's looking much better. And you have to remember, too, that when you get the entire page done, it's going to be just one little detail. But yet I always work at that detail. And I have my clear plastic behind, and it just helps me from denting into the next page. But now, look at their cheeks. Okay, so the main thing on that is I wanted you to see how I got that effect. Now, I am finished with this pink, so I'm going to put it over there. Um, whenever I go to doing their arms, I've got the two tones. I'm going to refer to them as dark and light. All right, so my darker is not actually this one with the darker barrel. I don't believe. Let's do a test. There's this, and then there's this. Yeah, this is the lighter one. So barrels can be deceiving. 
So I'm using 519 and 520. My 520 is darker. So whatever two you use, that's what you're going to remember. I'm using the darker one now. I'm doing the underside of her arm and fingers and right here at the thumb. Because as the light comes down, this part would be more in the shadow. Okay? They are children. Their skin will be just a little bit lighter. If they were children that were outside all the time, like Peter Pan, then it would be a little bit darker. Okay? And then come back with my lighter of the two shades and blend that together. And that's going to make her arm look just a little bit more rounded and not quite so flat. Okay? It's a long, arms are long and narrow, so that's why you see me doing the long strokes more so. As long as I cross into the shade before, then I'm fine with that. I'm not going to take the time to go ahead and do, well, his hand is all that's left that's skin in her legs. Now you get down here and you look and you say, now, is that socks or is that bare legs? And that's really up to you. Um, she has on socks and it's very clearly socks because it's got lines in it. He does not have lines, so I'm going to say his is bare legs. So I'm getting my darker tone and I did the back. I'm going to do the front. I'm going to do under the pants leg because it's casting a shadow. Do you remember when we did peppermints back last Christmas? Peppermint sticks. And I made them darker on the edges so that it looked more rounded. That's why I've done this that way. And then I'm going to come in with the lighter of the two shades and do that middle area. And as long as we're blending, it's okay. Um, that's You're just going to have to do what works for you. We've done enough videos by now that you know about blending. I'm showing you color placement, the dark, darker color again. And this shadow is going to come down quite a bit because her dress is also casting a shadow there. And then the lighter color. Um, when you're doing your pictures, like I said, different pencils react different ways. I would never press this hard with a pencil if it were a polychromo or a Prismacolor or a Marco Renoir. There would just not be the need to. But these are Marco Raffines. They are just, here's the shadow regular pencils so I have that need to um, be able to get the color down on there getting lighter as I come down this I'm just going to go ahead and do it all in the dark because it's way back in the shadow all right then finish this one off with the lighter one And that, my friend, is skin. Um, I have done skin on several other pictures. Oh, his hand, you're right. I'm sorry. Um, darker shade. I have done skin on several other videos. So, um, yeah, feel free to go back and look some of those up to see what we've done. As long as I don't time out on this phone where it doesn't overheat. This is the lighter shade. You saw me change. Um, I am going to just keep going. So that's skin. Now, I want to do his, her, his hair and her hair a little differently from each other. Even though they are siblings, I think it would still be a little bit different. So what I have chosen to do, if I can keep these separate, um, let's do... Let's go ahead and do hers first, just because it's more detailed. I'm using 563, 556, and 553. All right. I will be using 
these two on him, 553, 556, and then adding in 555. I'm keeping two of the colors the same and just changing one out so that they have that likeness, but yet they're different. I hope that made sense. So my darkest dark is going to come in here where the braids actually overlap. Where something is tucked under something else. And you'll see it's going to be the deepest up at the edge and then lighter as it comes down. Okay. And you get to decide parts of this. I mean, I'm like, okay, is this hair or is that the wall from behind? I'm going to leave it as the wall from behind because of the way this swoops around. And if you've got this book, you look in your book and you'll see those lines and you determine that for yourself. There is no right or wrong in this. You are the colorist. It is your choice. What I'm doing is each one of these lines that go curved like this, I'm trying to go ahead and just get some dark in there from where that hair is tucked in. And then you can see I'm getting lighter and lighter as I come out. Okay, this where it's tucked into the band might be a little bit darker right there also. Just make sure you get lighter as you come out. Um, I have some of the ladies. We've got the ladies coloring book group over on Facebook. It's called Coloring Books Dash Keep It Clean. Keep it clean because it's not skulls, witches, all that. They really have to be careful at Halloween because we can do fall, but we're not doing witches and such. Now I have to look here and decide what is what in this. That bow is staying right here, but this could be dark under that because it's coming out from under. Okay. Again, this is my darkest of my three. And then this... I am going to assume that that tucks back underneath and that this is all hair. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this dark because it's back in there. All right, back to the coloring book group. Yeah, um, it is a no curse words, no witches, no skulls, that type thing. But it's a lot of fun, ladies. So if you're not a part of that, come look us up. Um, very encouraging group. Just um, very nice people. The, um, the camaraderie there, the encouragement, it's really, really nice. So uh, very glad to be a part of that group. Okay, this is going to be darker. It's tucked under. Then this is under the edge of her little hat. Sorry, I'm looking at time. 13, almost 14 minutes in. We're doing good. Remember, it's not a race. Okay. Now, this is tucked under the edge, so I went ahead and got that darker. But now I'm going to be lighter as I come out and try to go the direction that those lines are. Those are directional lines of her, how her hair is falling. So we want to be purposeful on the direction we have that going. And I'll go ahead and put in just a couple of darker lines just to give it a little added oomph, so to speak. Okay, now this has got to fade out because this is on the top of her head. There might be a little bit of shadow from her scarf, but then the light's coming down, so we want to keep this area right here at its lightest. And that's why we pulled in that other color. Remember I said we were pulling in a third color? That's why when we go over to his, we're going to keep this top area lighter. All right, now this is down again. So this would be darker, and you're going to see me work in the strokes. All right, doing those strokes, the direction that the hair goes, just making sure that I'm dark way down in here. Erasers are made to be used. If you go outside those lines, just erase it. 
Okay, just erase it and go on. I'm going to keep this dark right here at the tip and then bring it up. What I'm actually doing there is if this is the paper, my pencil is touching and then flipping up and away, up and away. So it's hard pressure here, then lighter, lighter, and off. Okay, hopefully that will help someone. All right. So there's all my darker. And this actually under here would be a little darker. See how that line goes all the way through? So let's get that a little bit darker. Let's pull this a little darker here where it comes around. No, it's not it's not always easy seeing what comes around or is where. Part of it is a learning curve. And um, just when you're outside or even about your own home, stop and look at where the shadows are, what's closer to you, what's further away, what's lighter and darker, okay? All right, so that's probably it for my dark shade. So I'm going to put this up here. I'll remember to use it with him in a little bit. Now, here's my other two shades. This is my next darker, I think. So I'm going to go ahead and put it in real lightly. And it's very much a different shade, but I'm good with that. I want that to, to be a different shade. Okay, so I'm going to come up. I'm not worried about filling all the tooth of the paper in. I'm just really not. I'm just right now trying to get base color put in. And I will go over the color I just did a little bit on the edges because that's what's going to really blend them. So again, the pencils aren't as important as how you manipulate your pencils. Okay, you can see how that is blending. So if you get light enough, that light, light touch on that deepest color as you're coming out, then the next color is going to blend in so much easier. Now, I'm going to leave this for my lighter shade because it's out from under. This I could have left light. This one I'm going to leave lighter. I'm going to do it a little bit, but then leave light just on that edge so I can put some reflection in there from the actual light wherever that is in the room. Okay, blending these, getting this blended. And I just wonder how many of you want me to go through the whole page online or just show specifics like this. So I think what I'm going to do is I will title this video Hansel and Gretel Part 1. And then like when I'm doing the chain, I'll do part of it online to show you and part of it myself and then um, so forth. I won't show every little thing like I didn't do his face online, but I did hers so that you could see what I was doing without me actually doing all of it. Okay, now I'm going around here, but I'm going to leave that top part. Remember I said the light's hitting right there? And let's see how well I picked my colors. Going to that lighter shade now, the 553. So you'll need three shades, light, medium, and dark. And see, that's just enough lighter that it looks like the light's hitting there. Let's do these two, and then I'll bring it up to where you can see. I um, had a post on one of my YouTubes. The lady says, you know, I always watch them, and I don't do them with you. And then she came back, and she goes, okay, I did one with you. It's such a difference. Yeah, it's one thing to... Um, watch it's quite another to actually be doing it now let me show you up close see how her hair is lighter there at the top and there's still a lot of white showing through so if you're not happy with the white showing through that's where you would come back through and add another layer now we're at 19 minutes so I'm gonna put that pencil aside pick these two up and I'm gonna do his hair so I'm going to put them in order, light to dark. All right, we are using 563, 555, and 556. And hopefully this really is light to dark. 
So your darkest shade is going to be down under here. Yeah, his little buzz on the side, that is the darkest area. So anyway, that, that little blip, that little story was just to encourage you to color along. Even if you don't have this particular book, if you've got a book that's got hair, um, just look at it and see how you could possibly adapt what I'm teaching if you don't already know how to do hair to um, that book. Okay, now I did all of this in that dark. And I think what I'm going to do is pick up a darker color. Now this is almost a red 559, but I'm going to use it anyway just because it's laying out. I'm going to put it right here. It's over the top of a brown, so the brown is still going to lend itself and then I'm getting lighter as I come down. What I wanted to do is make that look like it was further tucked up in there and made it darker, and then I'll blend those two colors. All right? Okay, so for instance, I'm gonna do all this in this brown. And this is where your layering comes in. Okay, see that brown? Now I'm going to pick up this other color and I'm doing just at the edge, just where it's darker, okay? And it's just easier for me and for my phone, my camera, to pick the book up and down. Now I'm going to go over and blend all that. And now you can see it just looks darker up under that edge and it's not quite blended here. If you ever wonder what your picture looks like um, to other people, or if it actually needs more work, take it into a big bathroom mirror. Next shade down. Actually, no, we're gonna go ahead and use this one again. This is still the darkest, but we're not gonna be heavy on it. Not heavy handed, keep it kinda light. Um, take it to a bathroom mirror. Now I'm gonna go dark here and look at it the reflection and see what you see or take a photo of it and then look at it a lot of times that will show you where your work needs improvement getting really lighter up here in this top I'm using this color again right here because I want the commonality to make his hair look like it's all the same hair if I didn't use this color again at all, see this is tucked slightly behind so it's a little darker. If I didn't use this color at all, it might look like he had a wig on, okay? So where you use it in one spot, you want to go ahead and use it on another. Speaking of one spot and another, did y'all notice I missed his ear? Of course you did. Yeah, I just now saw that. So I need to go back and pick that up in a minute. Some darkness in, just like I did on hers when I did a few lines a little darker. Getting lighter as I come up. If this cuts off, you're just going to have to look for video number two on Hansel and Gretel. Okay. I can pull this up just a little bit more, but I need to keep it light. I'm doing my strokes so that hopefully it follows that hairline. I can bring this up a little bit more because it's on the side. The top tops what I'm wanting to keep lighter. Okay, and skin. This ear is further away so it's darker and done. See, that wasn't hard. Um, yeah, as you notice things, go back and do them then or you may forget to do them at all. Okay, so now next shade. And I'm looking at these and I'm going, they all look the same. But we just use this so we know it's darker. So now we're gonna go with the middle shade and blend in. Some people can even turn their pencils on the side and get a good blend. Not so much for me. 
I mean, I can some, but I end up making a mess and going into other areas. I'm going to go up in here, but I'm barely touching the paper when I get up there in the top. Okay. See, now they've got hair that's similar, but not the same. Because even though they are related, they are siblings, they're not going to have the exact same color hair. Or even if they do, it might be more appealing to our eye if it's a little bit different. So again, that's what I did that for. I used to nanny triplets, um, gosh, a lifetime ago. They're almost 30 now. Um, yeah, a lifetime ago, literally. And all three of them, different color hair. To this day, one's really dark, one's medium, and one has actually gone blonde. And it's not from coloring it. So, yeah. So even siblings can have different shades. Okay, I'm at 26 minutes. Let's see if we can get his hair finished up in the next few. Then when we come back, we're going to start on her scarf. I'm not going to do traditional from, um, I'm not going to do the traditional coloring. Her scarf is generally like an orangey tan in the books. And um, I'm probably going to go more of a red, maybe even a little bit pinky. So that should be interesting. But we'll talk about that next time I come back. Okay, so there's that color. And yeah, there's still quite a bit of white showing. It's, it's not bothering me that much. Okay, now my lightest color or my additional color where I used one on her. This is not used on her. This is a different color than what I used. Remember I said three colors, but then I um, picked up that red for in here, and then I said one color needed to be different so their hair wasn't exactly the same. Okay, I'm tired of twisting my arm around. I'm turning the book. Sorry, um, if you need to turn your books when you're coloring, by all means do. The only time I tell people not to turn their work is if they're painting and trying to learn something specific so they can paint it on a wall because you can't turn the wall. All right, so if you're coloring in your book and it's going to be easier for you to turn that book, please turn it. There's no use in happen to almost stand on your head to get the right direction. And see, I'm overlapping those colors. Just overlapping. So now they've got a lot of the same colors, but yet different colors. Now I can come in with my eraser, and I'm not going to turn it on because that would give me too much pressure, but very lightly. Can you all see what I'm doing? Here, let me turn it, see if this allows you to see. I'm just lightly rubbing over without turning it on. There's still color down under there, but now he has a highlight on top of his head. Okay, and you're right, this is top, so I can put even a little more highlight right here. And if you take too much off, you know which pencils you used, go put some back on. Same thing for her. I'm going to add a little bit right there. Okay? So there we have hair and highlights and skin. Yeah, I can do some here. You're right. I can put a little bit right here and here and here. I'm actually going to turn it on, but do a very light touch. Because I don't want to pull all the color off, but I do want just a little bit of highlight. Okay. All right, so I'm going to end this one, and we'll start another one, and we'll start on her um, dress 
and her scarf. Okay, see you back in a bit. Bye.